2018 News. This is breaking news. We've got some breaking news. We have just received the decision in one of the biggest cases in our state. Attorney General Bob Ferguson just ruled that three Tacoma police officers will face charges in the death of 33 year old Manuel Ellis. Now, this is a historic ruling for the state. It is the first time the Washington Attorney General's office has criminally charged police officers for the unlawful use of deadly force. It's also just the second time homicide charges have been filed in Washington against law enforcement officers since Washington. Washingtonians adopted initiative 940 back in November 2018 election. So just to catch you up on the history here, Manny Ellis died in Tacoma police custody back in March of 2020. The medical examiner's office said that he had meth and a heart condition that contributed to his death, but it was ultimately deemed a homicide. And it was determined that Ellis suffered from hypoxia, a medical condition where you don't have enough oxygen. Again, we cannot emphasize enough on the significance of these developments because it is so rare for officers to be charged criminally, especially for murder while doing their job. Let's bring in Brandy Cruz here. Brandy, again, we have been covering this story for uh, uh, since March 2020 and uh, a lot to unravel, but what is your take on this? Yeah, well, first, I, you know, I think that you're seeing there were six law enforcement officers at the onset of this who were sort of under the, the scope of the attorney general's office. And so what it seems is that, you know, after reviewing all the evidence, they have focused in on these three Tacoma police officers. Remember, there were five Tacoma police officers initially involved in some way in the Manny Ellis arrest. And then there was an off-duty Pierce County Sheriff's deputy who ended up helping out. Uh, so three of the Tacoma police officers officers facing what are incredibly serious charges and as you pointed out Hannah this is very consequential and will be a test of the new um, standards for prosecutors under I-940 which was passed by prosecutors you know there are a couple things I want to go through as part of the Attorney General's findings in this case you know at the onset this this investigation was a bumpy bumpy road uh, we know the investigation into Manny Ellis's death was initially taken on by the Pierce County Sheriff's Office. But then it was found out that there was that off-duty sheriff's deputy who was involved. And so there was this clear conflict of interest where the Pierce County Sheriff's Office could not keep investigating this. So the governor got involved. It was handed off to the Washington State Patrol to investigate. Um, you know, family members believed it was taking too long. I mean, it's been more than a year. And now you have this decision from the Attorney General's Office. You know, at the onset, and again, when I get back to the kind of the bumpy nature of this investigation, there was a lot of information that came out early on that was directly conflicted later on by witness uh, video and testimony at the scene. One of the uh, things I want to note for you in the Attorney General's uh, press release today and also in the certification of probable cause, so it basically lays out the case, the officers ha had said at the onset that Manny Ellis aggressively resisted arrest. There was a claim that he had picked one of the officers up uh, by his uh, bulletproof vest and slammed him to the ground. Uh, and it seems like the attorney general's office does not believe that. Uh, in their probable cause, they say none of the video evidence nor any of the witnesses uh, say that they saw Manny Ellis uh, resisting arrest in any way. Uh, and also, and I want to read for you one of the witness statements that's quoted in here, the witness saying, it doesn't seem like he was fighting at all to me. He wasn't even defending himself. So with the evidence they gathered, Hannah, the AG's office suggesting that Manny Ellis didn't resist arrest or attack the officers. And also the attorney general's office questioning the very existence of a reason for a stop in the first place. 